Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Welcome. Thanks for coming out tonight. My name is Ben Lauer, and I'm the host of ZapFest. And uh, I see some familiar faces tonight. If this is your first ZapFest, uh, ZapFest is a, I kind of think of it as a user group of sorts. And we're committed to helping developers make the best Windows Phone applications and experiences that they can. Uh, we have a series of events coming up uh, in the future. So I'm assuming because you're here tonight, you're on our distribution list. And uh, tonight, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Peli and Nikolai, who work here in this building in Microsoft Research. And they're going to talk about uh, one of the projects that they have, which is called Touch Develop. It actually started as, uh, as something called Touch Studio. And Touch Develop is uh, it's from a team. They're on the uh, research and uh, computing systems. Computer, you told me, and I, and I totally it's forgot. It's a very long name, Research and Software Engineering. Research and Software Engineering. So they normally work on big computing systems like Windows and that type of thing. So they took a different approach and looked uh, at the phone. And I think you're, if you haven't seen Touch Develop, you're going to think it's, I think it's really cool, and I'm, I'm looking forward to what they, what they talk about. So without further ado, here's Nikolai and Pelly. Thank you. So we are trying to do everything on the phone today. And so to get started, um, ah. so, so let's look around us what is happening in the world. So we see that many, many more smartphones are being sold than ever. In fact, there's a projection that this year more smartphones than PC are getting sold. And so if you think about it, everyone needs a phone. So everyone will have sooner or later a smartphone device. And maybe this is the only device, only computing device that some people will own. So smartphones are becoming really, really powerful. If I look at the latest generations of smartphones, they have uh, megabytes of RAM, gigabytes of storage, a gigahertz of, of processing power. It's really powerful, way more powerful than the first computer I ever had. So what are we doing with the smartphones? Pretty much uh, a lot of the things that we need to, a PC for a couple of years ago. So we can browse the internet, um, read and write emails, we can play games. Um, so there are many tasks that we do all the time on smartphones. But there are some things that we haven't been able to do on smartphones yet. And there's one item in particular that I'm going to talk about together with Peli. That is um, how we can actually write apps on a phone. So pretty sure that most of the people who are listening right now haven't actually written an app on the phone yet. Pretty sure that you've tried it out yourself using a PC or a laptop. You hook it up to your mobile device and you learn tools like Visual Studio um, and C Sharp or other languages in, in order to create your own apps. And so what we were thinking about in our research group is, do, does it really have to be that complicated? So if I just want to create some simple apps, could it be easier just on the phone? So um, there were many researchers who were excited by that idea, and that prompted us to start a new project called Touch Develop. So the idea is it's an entire development environment on the phone. So you, you don't need a PC. Everything is done on the phone. And so you can create entire applications uh, in a somewhat lightweight fashion. So we don't call them apps. We call them scripts. So you could think of this environment also as a kind of a scripting environment. So you're composing high-level actions into scripts. So you a program on a high level, but you can still access pretty much all of the different sensors and the data that is on your phone. It's, it's a pretty powerful environment you will see in a moment, um, all the different things that you can do with it. And you cannot just create new scripts on the phone. We also allow you to share these scripts with other people. So we have a concept called the Script Bazaar, which is kind of similar to the marketplace. But what you are 
sharing over there isn't compiled apps, but it is scripts as source code. So everyone can read them. And even if you don't want to share it with other people, you can still use the cloud to back up your scripts. Uh, that is a nice facility. And just like in the marketplace, we allow you to search the script bazaar to find interesting scripts that other people have written. And um, so we will talk a bit about how we deal with issues like privacy and what about malware scripts. Um, we are opening up an entire new world with the concept of writing scripts on the phone in a very easy way. So we thought about that and we will tell a bit about our research. Now I've been talking a lot, so let's see it all in action and Peely will give you a demo. Awesome. Hello everyone. Whoops, a letter of that shaked. Uh, so my experience, uh, my best experiences with, with touch develop is uh, I, have a, I have a young daughter and those things don't sleep much. So I end up doing coding session at 3 a.m., uh, you know, baby in one hand and uh, typing away on, on the other side. All right, so here we are in, in Mango, beautiful Mango, and we have the Touch Develop app, which I'm gonna start now. And that's the app that's on the marketplace right now. And I have a bunch of application open up. I'm actually logged in as the, as the Touch Develop sample user and what I'm, we're going to do is we're going to create a new app here that uh, plays a song randomly. And maybe we add a couple features like uh, stopping and playing, uh, starting and stopping the player and do uh, fun things like that. So we get started by clicking on the, on the plus button here. And we get the opportunity to give a name to our app. So we're going to call it Xapfest. Xapfest. Typing is difficult. There we go. <clears throat> so now we enter uh, the editor of the, uh, of the script, which contains actions. There's also a pivot called data, which we'll look at uh, later. Actions are our executable code. And there's always one for you that's called main. So we can just tap on this guy and, and look what's inside. And you can see here a view of the action. It looks like a little uh, editor in your phone. And uh, it's, a, it's a typed uh, script language. It should be very intuitive, hopefully. So here we can see that there is a string called touch develop and there's post to wall. First thing we can do when we look at the script is run it. So there's a play button at the bottom. And when you, when you run it, you can see that on top we have printed touch develop is cool. So let's go and change that a little bit. So in order to change the code, you first tap where you want, uh, what line you want to edit, and then you get a a second menu which allows you to add more statements, cut, uh, cut the code, go to, a, go to a function. There's a lot of uh, things you do in, a, in an IDE that you can actually do here. I'm just going to go and edit this, um, this line of code. Now we enter a third editor which, is, which we call the expression editor and it allows us to edit this expression. You don't type in characters in touch up. you actually add and remove tokens. What I mean by that is I can, for example, remove the post to wall call and maybe I want to make it lowercase and then post to wall again. <clears throat> and maybe I can go and edit the string and say that it's super cool. So let me say super cool. There we go. Rip. And I can press back again to, yeah, you don't see that, but press back again to go back to the to the main view, and again I can I can run the code, and now we can see that touch up is not only cool but super cool, excellent. So we got the basics of programming here. It's not just straight line programming. You can actually do uh, loops, so for loops. You can do if statements, while loops, all these things that you need to to build interesting programs. So for example, what I'm going to do now is is move this piece of code into a for loop. And I'm going to do this by going to the submenu. And now I have the opportunity to, to move this, this statement into an if statement, a for each, a for loop, or while loop. So I'm just going to do the for loop. <coughs> and I need to provide an upper bound to, uh, to that loop. So we're just going to make it uh, 10. So again, everything is such that you don't have to type in all of the syntax. You just fill in holes. Yeah, so, 
So to access the numbers, there's a sub keyboard here, and then you access the, the keyboard for numbers. And similarly, there's a keyboard for uh, arithmetic operations, and also a keyboard for the usual uh, Boolean operation and or not true. And these are specialized keyboard for programmers, for writing scripts. So we go back, and now we have a loop that prints uh, my little message 10 times. And as, for example, as you can see, we, we don't allow you to give a lower bound to the for loop be, just to make it simpler. Awesome. So remember when you started programming, what was the first program you wrote? It, maybe it was a loop where you just printed foobar or something like that. And you got very excited about it. And we think if you're starting to program on your phone and you can do that in a matter of minutes, you're going to be excited by technology and programming. Um, but we can do much more because it's not the 80s or the 90s here. We have a phone. And there's music. There's media, pictures. We can do games. So let's, let's make it more interesting. I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, well, maybe we just keep it. And the original scenario was playing a song randomly. So let's, do, let's go and do that. I'm going to use a shortcut here, and I'm just going to press plus because I just want to add a line in the program. And, uh, <clears throat> and that was the button to close the app. And then, there we go, a little uh, report crash, uh, a, re a crash report, which we fixed since then. Let's go back to Zapfest. Where is that guy? Nope. Wrong scripts and Glockfest. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the for loop, go and select that guy, and then I'm going to add a statement below. And this time I want to add an expression. And now I need to find the songs in the phone. There's quite a number of APIs, as you can see here, which we, these buttons, we call them IntelliButtons. And I don't really see songs in there. I can actually page. There's multiple page of those. And it's not obvious where songs is. So I'm going to tap on this one, which is called Explore All. And this gives me a list of all the APIs that I can search. There's a search button here. And I can search for song. Oops. No. I'm going to get it. All right. So there are two services, one called Media and the other called Player that have something related to song. It's not obvious what it is, but I can just try the first one. Now we can see that the media service actually has a song, uh, a song action, so I can just uh, take that one. And in order to understand what's happening, I can even look at the help here. There's a little line that says, gets the song on the phone, and it returns <coughs> songs. All right, and there's a, there's a yellow line on top that says, tap to fix it. So what I want to do is, store this songs collection into a local variable. And this is just, uh, this, is, this happens to be the fix that we provide you automatically. So now I have a statement that fetches the song from the, from the media library and stores it in a, a local variable. All right, so I can add uh, the next statement, which, be, which would be to grab a random song out of the collection. So we're gonna, we're gonna refer to songs. And here you can see our uh, our auto-completion in action. We, we, have a, we have some intelligence in the app that reorders the buttons here, and, you, and we think that songs is the, is the element you're most likely to use right now. So it shows that on, on top. So we were actually pretty, uh, pretty accurate in this case. And then the next operation is going to be at. So at is my indexer. I don't want zero, so I'm going to go and delete that. And I'm looking for the math service. So I can loop through here. And here we have math. So that should be a good candidate for a function like random. And we have our well-known friend, random. All right. So random takes, what does random take? So if I want to know about random, I can type here. And then the help about random shows up here. Returns a random integral number. So I need to give it a count. Let's go back here. And I'm going to refer to songs. And songs has a count property. 
So it all flows. But now I'm starting to have quite a bit of code on this line. So what I want to do is select this, select this inner expression because that's really uh, the computation I do to get a random index. And I'm going to tap on extract here. And this will extract this, sub this expression to a local variable and make my, my code cleaner. So if I go back, whoops, let's go back here. Let's apply the fix. All right. So what do we do? We, uh, we fetch the songs. We get the random index. We fetch the, the song at that random index. And now we just want to play it. So we add one more line, song, and the first item is play. So we're lucky again. And we play it. So let's try that. I, I must warn you, I have two songs on my phone. So it may not look uh, random every time. So I'm not sure the, the video can pick that up. So I'm just gonna... All right. Awesome. Excellent. So we basically wrote a script that could access our media library and play a song. We didn't have to care about the details of how this is supposed to happen. Let's make it more fun. Can you show some of the album art? Yes. So we, we've been posting strings to the wall. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of those. But we can do much better. In fact, the song uh, is associated to an album, and the album has some, uh, some art uh, to it. So what we're going to do is... It's, Move here. We're going to add, we're going to post the, the album art to the wall. Now, the album art is a picture. I'm going to go and say post to wall. The album art is a picture. So, when this picture is going to display itself to the wall, automatically it's going to do it the right way, which is showing the image. If you post a song to the wall, you get a nice play button. If you post a map to the wall, you get a map. All the, all the built-in primitives in the touch language know how to render themselves nicely on the wall. The user doesn't have to stop the music, do much about UI, can just uh, blindly uh, post up to the wall. All right, so we got art. Yeah, so that is great, but I think the default media player does pretty much the same functionality. I don't really need touch develop for the script, right? So the, the pressing pause button is kind of annoying. Let's, let's use some, some events uh, to start and play the player. So I'm going to go back to the, so what I want to do is when I turn the phone down, either pause the song or resume the song, right? So I can use the accelerometer to track whether my phone is face up or face down. And based on that, uh, I can uh, respond to an event. Now, the user doesn't have to know that there's an accelerometer behind that. He can just hook to events that we expose uh, for him. And we have a number of events. And the first one is the game loop, which is a useful for game. But the second one is a shake event, which happens when you shake your phone. Phone face up, face down. All these events are based on the accelerometer. And we have more events which are more related to the media. But I'm going to look at, uh, let's say, face down, I guess. So phase down is just another action that will trigger when we turn off the phone. And in this case, what I'm going to do is add an if statement because we, we need to differentiate the case where the player is playing or, or paused. So I guess I need a player. Let's, let's find out where that player is. Player. And we want to look for is playing. Is playing. All right. So... We got that going. So let's go and add something in the in the then part. In this case, if it's playing, we want to pause it. So let's go back to player and pause. Perfect. And now back here, an expression. And again, player resume. All right. So we got our code in. If it's playing, we pause it. If not, we resume it. Now, I want to go back quickly to main. I don't want to do a back button, back to the main view, and then tap on main. What I can do in this view is swipe to the left and the right and, and go through all the events and actions that I have in my script. 
So I can just quickly go in and out of my actions. There's also a way to do a go-to. When you refactor methods, you can jump into a method. All right, so it's going to play. Now, we need another phase down event to play it again. So again, it's playing now. And then when I'm going to face it down, it's going to stop again. So that is becoming Almost. a really... We missed that one. <laughs> oh, 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 no, I left the app. Yeah. <laughs> Too okay. hard. So that's I becoming a really cool script. Yes. So let's say I want to run that all the time. What yeah. could I do to make it easier to run it? We can pin it. With Mango, we have secondary tiles, so we can pin those scripts uh, to the to our main screen and run them with the single uh, with the single tab. So the button is here, and we're going to pin this guy. And now we can see that we have our Xap Xapfest app. I can tap on this and. It loads and runs the app directly. No more uh, interaction with the menu and going down and finding it. So it's really close to experience you want to have when you, you have your favorite script. It's very close to it. All right. So let's go back to that, to that tile. It's, it's not that great. It's, it has a horrible color and whoa. Okay, I guess my fingers are hanging around. Sorry, guys. And of course, the, the track doesn't really fit the, the app. So let's customize the tile. And we can do that through Touch Develop quite, quite easily. So I'm going to go back to Touch Develop. I can't go back into the app. It's a single app. So we're, we're, we're out of the navigation uh, stack. And go back to my Xap. Where's my Xap guy? Xap Fest. And now what, uh, what we want to do is modify the tile. When we pin the action to the front screen, we actually created uh, a global variable for you that, is, that represents a tile. And we added it in what we call the data. That data is serialized across multiple runs. And you can use that tile, ver that tile object to customize the looks. You, know, you can change the icon, the color, attach an image, and so forth. So let's do that in the main action to serialize all the cool information that we have in the song in the tile. So the first thing we want to do is put the, so we want to access the, the tile, which is under data. And there's one element called main tile. And the naming convention, is, it's pretty simple. It's the action name and, and tile. And you can see it has a, a number of cool actions. You can set the back icon, set the background color, set the content, so that's the text that shows on the secondary. Uh, when it flips, the counter, the front icon, uh, and you can clear that or, or query it. OK, so I'm going to set the front icon to be. So you cannot feel right now what you are typing. Whoops. So I'm going to set the front icon to be the song, album, art. Cool. And I want to do something more. And again, I don't want to come back to the main editor and do plus. What I can do is tap into the void here. So I can tap here because that's where I want to put more code. And then I have the opportunity to add a new line without leaving this editor. So in, some, in many cases, you know exactly what you want to add and you don't want to go in, into this flipping mode. I can actually swipe and go back to the previous line. So there's a lot of navigation that leverage the touch environment uh, to help you write code. So again, what we're going to do is tab, data, main tile, and then we're going to set the content as the song name. Song name, let's add a new line, and we're going to do tab, main tile. There's a calendar. Let's put the track number as the calendar. That's going to be fun. Uh, da, 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 not here. Track number. Cool. All right. So I'm going to run this again. And I, I prefer the other song, but uh, this one is fine too. And if we go back to the main screen, you can see that we have now a nice secondary tile with track number two, 
uh, we've resized and squeezed the image to make it look good. And also you have the, um, the name of the song in the back. And we could do that uh, very intuitive fashion. I'm really beginning to like the script and, and I want it too. So how, how does it work? Can you submit it to the marketplace and then? Yes, publishing. Yeah. So let's go back to Touch Develop. And uh, now that I'm super happy with my, with my scripts, in fact, let me maybe finish it before, before we publish it. I'm going to add a comment here. And the reason I'm going to add a comment here is because comments become the documentation of your action. Um, the, fir the first comment is the documentation of your action. So I'm going to say uh, runs a random script. Song. Song. Good point. I'm saying a lot of the word script right now. Yay. And you can see that now the doc, the little help, shows up there. Right. And maybe also we, we said that the icon wasn't a great pick. So we're going to go here, make it more fancy. Let's go for pink. And uh, pick one of the built-in actions. We have three uh, built-in icons. We have 300 icons. One of them should fit more song. Let's see what we have. The trumpet. Yes. Beautiful. Play. Random. We're going we're gonna to publish the script in the real uh, script bazaar. So just publishing it up a little bit. All right. I think I'm ready. I'm just going to hit the publish button. It gives me a final confirmation dialog that tells me I shouldn't store you know, passwords and things like that in there because it becomes public. And off it goes. So, so let me try that out with my phone. It's uploading. And the icon changed. So this is my phone, a different phone. I have the white background. And I also have Touch Develop installed. So let's go in. And so there are different pivots on the main screen. So there's a list of all the scripts I already have on my phone. And then I can also take a look at um, the latest scripts that other people have published. And guess what? The first one is the one that Peli just wrote. And he was logged in as our samples account. So it's actually now an official sample of Touch Develop. And I can now take a look at it, whether I'm interested. And what you see here is a, a detail screen where you can write reviews and read a bit about what the script does. So here you see Peli's description, play a random song. Yeah, I think I like that. I want to try that out. Then I can just install it using the install button. And by the way, we are, we are improving that experience for the next release so that it's, it, it doesn't, it, you don't have to think that you have installed it or not. You just want to play it. Yeah, just want to just try it out. Just run the script. So now I have it. I have the entire code on, on my phone. So you recognize um, the code. And now I can just run it. And now it should pick one of my songs. Huh? And OK. And so it, it picked a random song. And I'm not sure what happened there, but it doesn't really matter. And um, so you can just run any script that somebody else has written and published. So is there anything else I should show here? Or? So maybe what you could show is um, how easy it is to, to create screenshots. So if you run it one more time. Well, you could create a screenshot. Or it, it didn't, we were unlucky with this one. All right, so um, when you publish your, your app to the marketplace, you give screenshot. This you know, makes people want to look at it, and they get excited by what they see. So we want to do that for ZapFest 2 here. So I'm going to go back into the app and run it. In fact, I shouldn't do that. I should just go here and just run it here. So it's playing, always this Richard is there. 
and you can see that we have a screenshot button while executing the script. So when you do that, we take a screenshot and we send it to the script bazaar uh, for you. And Nikolai, as soon as the screenshot is, is sent, yeah. So let's turn this guy off. Okay. Thank you. It's still it's still posting, uh, and maybe I'm going to share that to the social services that are on my phone. I'm going to say yes. Let's tweet that. So every screenshot gets a unique URI, and uh, this got uh, shared through the new Mango uh, uh, share status task. And we can leverage all the social services that you have on your phone registered. Yeah. Okay. Put it on the. Yeah. So when I'm now going into the app and look at the details of the script, then what we see here is um, in one of the pivots. So by the way, I can also look at the code. It's it's even without installing it, and I see the screenshot. So that was really easy to add screenshots. And in fact, any user can add more screenshots to illustrate what the script is doing. Okay. So I think that um, is the demo. Yes. So let's go back to what else you have to say. So we, we just showed kind of a fraction of all the different functions you can access from touch develop. We have basically packaged all or nearly all of the available um, APIs uh, on the Windows phone into our scripting language. So you can also access the, the camera. Um, you can directly access accelerometer data. Same for the compass and the gyro if you have one. Um, you can access the data, you can query contacts and your calendar and compose new emails. And so we have seen how to deal with songs, but you can do the same thing with pictures. Iterate over all the pictures on your phone and do something fun with it. It's easy to access the web. I'm going to show another script in a moment that actually does some web queries and shows a map. So we integrate with Bing Maps. Um, and it's also possible to write games. So I will show a game that uses a built-in physics engine that we provide. So all you have to do is write a few lines to create some objects and let them bounce around. Yeah, and we have seen how you can actually customize your tiles and get your scripts right on the start screen. Um, okay, so let me show you some more scripts that people have written. So when I go back to the app, So I have a number of scripts installed already. So if I go to my um, main touch develop screen, you see that I probably have 50 different scripts installed from, from other people. And I want to show two. And um, so one is called SF Park. So what does this one do? I can, of course, look at the code. And uh, here it's a bit more substantial, but let's first run it to see what it does. So um, the author queried a web service to get the location of different districts in San Francisco, and then uses an XML parser to take apart this information and show it to us in a nice way. I'll show you the code in a moment. So from the web service, he gets uh, this list of different districts in San Francisco, and then given this information, he calls another web service to get information about the availability of, of parking places. So if you ever tried to park in San Francisco and you didn't have an, an app for that yet, then uh, somebody was able to write a script um, with touch develop for that. So here you see how a Bing map is created and overlaid with some custom information that came from the web in XML form. And so let's just briefly look at the code. Um, so here's the main action. And what you can see here is that it's a bit more substantial than what we just wrote. So it's basically two pages of code. And uh, what does it do? I just want to point out some highlights. So one is that here we download um, the information about the different locations from the web. It comes back in XML, and we have a built-in XML parser so that you can get the information out that you want. We have the same thing for JSON. And then, well, he processes the information, and eventually 
he creates a Bing map. And um, let's see, yeah, that is here. So we have, uh, on top. We ha yeah, so at the very top, um, we provide the full Bing map API with very easy abstraction. So all you have to do is call a simple function, maps, create map, now you have a map, and then you can add some details to it. So that is one script. Now we were really surprised um, how many games people created with touch develop. I mean, you can do many different things. Um, you can access everything on your phone, but you can also just play games. So the, um, so you can see um, what are the scripts that people are most excited about, which ones are most popular. And I want to play with you um, the top most script, the most popular script we have right now. It's called Save the Bubble. And so I already have it installed. So I just um, tap on that here. And what does this script do? It's a game. So they are moving rectangles and I have a ball that is me. And by tapping on the screen, I can get my ball higher into the air and I have to avoid obstacles. So right now there are no squares coming on my line. So I'm going to get a really good high score. Oh, that's too easy. It's a good day. Ah, okay. So I have to ah, avoid the obstacles and now I bumped into one. And now what you see is um, another API that we provide that makes it really easy to create engaging social games. Um, when the game computes a high score, you can share that on our centralized leaderboard score. So you don't have to worry about setting up a server or anything like that. Um, you can just, in your script, post a leaderboard score and then in the cloud we keep track of which user was it, what script was he running or she, and then um, you can check how you are doing. So I'm somewhere, I've played this a lot, so there are probably, there are hundreds of people who have played it and I at least made it to the fifth position, a bit part of that. Okay. The um, leaderboard shows the top 10 and you. Yeah. So here you just see the top. Um, so these are some scripts that people recently wrote. And so we also have a website that basically shows you, um, regardless of what kind of device you're currently having in front of you, it shows you all of the scripts that people have written. So if you go to touchdevelop.com, you can actually see what's going on. Uh, you can see the latest scripts here and um, the most popular scripts. And there's a little picture gallery on top that shows you what other people have written. Um, so if you are curious, for example, here's an interesting screenshot which um, shows a mathematical function. This is another example of what people have been writing with touch develop. Let's see. So you can chart functions. If you're curious how to do that with touch develop, download it, try it out. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Okay. So back to here. So when we created touch develop, it started out as a fun project, but in fact, there are many not so trivial aspects that we had to investigate. And so we are Microsoft Research, so we also have fun taking on some of the bigger challenges. And one interesting challenge was how we deal with your privacy. So as you have seen, it's easy to create a script that um, gathers some sensor information, for example, your current location. And then it can do something with the data and send it to a web service. You might not want that, right? So we have thought about how to deal with that with our scripts. And the big difference compared to the regular marketplace is that, I mean, it's very easy to publish new scripts, right? So it's, uh, we have to think especially hard in our context about how to avoid potentially malicious scripts um, since it's so easy for anyone to just plug them in. So what we have come up with is an interesting way how we look at wow, what the information um, flow is in the, in the script. So we don't just look at what are the different features that the script is using, like um, location, camera, but we also look at how this information actually flows um, to a thing like a web service. And we came up with a scheme, I'm just telling you 
the essence where, um, so we look at this flow, and whenever um, our server in the cloud, looking at the flow, can determine that your data is uh, first shown to you in a way that you can actually decide whether you want to let it go out, and only then it is sent to a web service. So if you always have a chance to review the data and make a good decision whether you want to share it, then we are going to run this script uh, with your real data. But if you determine that your data is either somehow manipulated and maybe your location is encoded into a picture, then by looking at the picture you couldn't really decide anymore whether you want to share it or not. Because you don't know whether some of the pixels now actually hold your location information. So whenever a script would do something like that, um, either take your information and encode it in a strange way, or send it out without showing a dialogue where you have a chance to review it, then when you run the script, by default we would use anonymized data. So when you run a script for the first time that has an interesting information flow that we are a bit concerned about, then you get a dialogue like, like this one, where we show you the flow, so it's a bit uh, hard to read, but it's, this one shows that your location information might flow to the web. So we show that to you, and then you can flip a slider saying whether you want to use your real information or anonymized information. And by default, we would only use your real information if you have a chance to review it before it goes out. So it's, this is given defaults, it's always safe to just run the scripts. And then you can later decide, maybe after inspecting the code, that you want to give out your real information. Okay? So, um, yeah, check out our script bazaar. Many interesting things have been submitted. So we have published the first version in April, and we got a lot of great feedback. So it's, it's one of the top 1% of all Windows uh, phone marketplace applications. And uh, we've got some really nice reviews. So some of the reviews showed that this is also a great tool for learning. So if you are a professional developer, then you probably have access to a PC, a laptop, big tool sets, powerful tool sets. Um, but many people might not have that kind of access. So if, if you're a student, or maybe you live in a developing country, um, the phone is all you have. And then touch develop is a really great way to get started with programming. So if, if you have a phone and OPC, then this might be the first experience for, for you to actually learn programming. Um, and that is something that we want to um, really leverage with touch develop. So, and then maybe as a, an outlook, if you think about it, so it has been the case that in order to program a PC, you needed a bigger mainframe computer. Then a time came where the PC became powerful enough to actually do all of the work that's necessary to program itself. And now if it's possible to write certain scripts with touch develop, then maybe uh, you don't really have to reach out to the big tool set to write that kind of scripts. So, so think a bit about it. We, we believe that we will see a lot of scripts in the future that um, can be written just on the phone. And if you don't need a PC, you just do it on the phone. Okay, so we have reached the end of um, the talk.